how many of you feel, when you have your cell phone with you, that you're actually in touch with your friends even though you're not in contact with them? Do you feel that way? That, get this man out of here, he doesn't have a cell phone. It, what, you get a heckler up, up front for me, huh? Anyways, I think that's what's going to happen with wireless health care. You are not going to be in touch with your doctor directly, your health care provider directly, but you're going to feel like that person can monitor you at all times when something goes wrong. And that, I think, is going to be the magic of what wireless health care brings to the world. And Qualcomm's been involved in wireless health care for a while. Don Jones, we hired uh, six years, six and a half years ago out of the uh, out of the healthcare industry. I've spent now six and a half years training him on wireless. Uh, three years ago, we started the Wireless Life Sciences Summit uh, with Johnson & Johnson, where we brought together uh, medical device companies, people from the uh, healthcare industry, and wireless companies, because really, to get this convergence going, you have to have people who know both sides of what's going on. And, uh, and that's, it's that core group of people who knows both wireless and healthcare that are really going to make the advances. And then in March, we just uh, started this West with uh, Mary, Gary and Mary West uh, and uh, Scripps Health started this West Wireless Health Institute that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you know, what's a wireless band-aid? I mean, it's really this perfect storm where you're going to have radios coming together with uh, flexible uh, batteries and sensors and things that you can stick on that will keep track of what's going on, of, of your vital signs as you're moving around. So we're really going to cut the cord. And it's going to reduce the cost. It's going to improve the productivity of doctors, improve people's wellness. It's going to be with you all the time. It's going to give you more individual health care. And it's going to close the loop because you're actually going to be able to monitor what's going on with you because you've got a sensor with you. Just like you have your cell phone with you, you have the sensor on you at all times. And we'll be able to treat acute care conditions, chronic conditions, and improve wellness. And as we've heard about this age wave that's going on, we've got to do something to improve the productivity of the healthcare system and the productivity of the doctors. And you know, we've done this uh, once before in the wireless industry. So we went from connecting places with telecommunications to connecting people with telecommunications. And it's exactly the same kind of thing that we'll do with wireless health. We are going to cut these cords. And that's really made a big difference in the world. I mean, now today, there are three times more mobile devices than there are landline devices. So this has happened in telecom in a big way. And we all know it. People call you now. They don't call your house really anymore. They're, they're calling your cell phone. So you think about that in the developed world. Now think about the developing world. In the developing world, most people will only have a cell phone as their connection into the net and into the global telecommunications networks and onto the internet. It's going to be their only computer, too. And we'll do different kinds of things in the developing world to do healthcare applications. There'll be more monitoring. There'll be more application. I think less likely we're going to be selling a lot of wireless band-aids in the developing world. But there are still a lot of things that are already being done in the developing world using wireless to improve healthcare outcomes. Now, if you think about how fast this technology got adopted, it took 20 years to sell the first billion cell phones. Now, look at that number. 1 billion 3G cell phones shipped in 2013. So we have not only freed up people from sitting in one place talking on the phone, but we've also done that for their access to the internet. And that's, that's a huge issue. So we've cut the cord. What happens in the, in the healthcare space? Wires are used all over the place. And wires are great facilitators of infection. They're great things that keep you tied down in one spot. They're great things that do things like keep you in the hospital. We worked with a company called CardioNet that has a wireless cardiac monitoring service where you wear the monitoring leads connected to a PDA over the air through a center that we run that manages the connectivity and ensures the delivery to a monitoring station that watches what happens with you. This is out in the market. Clinical trials have already been done. It is three times more effective than sitting in the hospital. Why? Because you're walking around living your life. 
You're not tied down by a wire. It's a critical factor. Plus, it's a lot cheaper than you know, using a hospital bed in the ICU. So, okay, so we got a lot of wires here. One wire for blood oxygen. We got 10 wires for EKG, which is what CardioNet does. 30 wires for sleep say. I mean, imagine that trying to sleep with 30 wires attached to you. There's a little bit of an irony there, I think. And then look at this poor guy. I mean, imagine trying to think with 128 wires stuck on your head. So, so really, I think there's you know, a great opportunity here. We cut the wires. We free people up, we improve productivity, we lower cost, and you know, all of these things are critical in, in healthcare today. Now, how's the loop going to be closed? Well, the doctors are going to be carrying around these devices. So they have smartphones. Uh, I think the numbers today are three out of five uh, doctors have smartphones. In the future, four out of five doctors will have smartphones. By the way, Smartphones are spreading worldwide. So this is very much a global phenomenon. But the fact of the matter is the doctor will be able to see what's going on with you on their smartphone. OK, so now let's turn to wireless health. There was just a recent survey from the CTIA that said 78% of Americans are interested in having mobile health solutions. So there is consumer demand. So we'll have these wireless biosensors. And there's an analyst community or an analyst that said, uh, 400 million wireless healthcare devices are going to be sold by 2014. So huge market. So naturally, that's one of the reasons why we're interested in. We build the enabling technologies that go into cell phones. We'll build enabling technologies that go into this. And we'll work with partners. Now I'm going to do a little demo here of one of these uh, wireless sensor devices. And did anybody bring cookies in from the break? I okay, just want to make sure that we're okay here because my assistant might go just a tad crazy. So <laughs> the assistant is wearing one of these shimmer devices you heard about earlier. This running a Zigbee radio. It's got about a day's worth of battery life. And it's doing things like checking acceleration. So it's watching how the body moves and reporting it back. But we're also actually interpreting the data here. So let me put this down and let's. <laughs> Very good. Demo worked. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll tickle him. We'll pat him on the belly later and see whether that works. Uh, so the other thing that we got here also is another uh, wireless sensor. Sorry, that should. There we go. So this fluke monitor is uh, it, it uh, generates cardiac outputs and also artifacts. This is uh, just fresh out of customs. It's a, a monitor, a cardiac monitor from the whole center, IMEC whole center. It's running a Nordic radio. Lasts about seven days. And what's interesting about this is that we've actually built a new signal processing technology into it. Because one of the big issues you have is packet loss with these radios. You also have security. You have artifacts that might come about. This compressed sensing technology that we built into this actually rejects those kinds of things. So I'm going to show you that if we can get this uh, running up on the screen. So you see we need to go to this uh, computer, too. There we go. OK, so, so what you see on the top is actually what's coming out. And then this is what's actually being done from reconstructing the signal. And the way compressed sensing works is that we actually take fewer samples than you might otherwise take. In the case of an ECG, it's not that big of a deal because it's a relatively low power sensor. But it, for example, in the case of pulse oximetry, where you have to light up an LED, it actually saves tremendous amount of power to do a lot less sampling. And yet we get the same benefit in terms of signal quality, in fact, improves sim signal quality because we reject packet losses and other kinds of artifacts. So let me put a different artifact in there, uh, 60 cycles in there. And now you can see as, it, uh, as I walk over here, and hopefully my demo now works. You guys picking me up? Bada boom. OK, there's some packet losses. There's the 60 cycles coming. So on top, you can see the, the original signal. 
On the bottom, you can see the signal that's actually uh, after the reconstruction of this uh, digital signal processing. And similarly, it rejects things like uh, respiration as well. So you'll see the uh, signal eventually, after we get through the buffer, start to go up, hopefully. Now is where I tap dance. There we go, okay. So there it's going up and down. And you can see that we're actually rejecting that artifact as well. So this is a new kind of signal processing technology that we've actually built into these sensors. In addition, we're building actually new radio technology that's specifically designed for extremely low power so that when you put it into a wireless Band-Aid, it'll actually last a very long time. You can imagine that that'll be a, a very critically important thing. So that's actually a good segue to the next speaker who is the chief medical officer of the West Wireless Health Institute. And one of the other things that he is, I, I always have to embarrass him a little bit, is that he was named by uh, GQ magazine one of the 13 rock stars of science. There's Seal, and there is Dr. Eric Topol. So <laughs> welcome. You had to do that. You had to do that. Thanks, Thanks Eric.